Okay, so the next part that we've got here, we're going to be looking at trying to do some trickier bits of differentiation. So it says here that often in exam questions, you will be given x in terms of y, but you want to find dy by dx in terms of x. And the key of this is to make use of one of these appropriate trig identities that we've got here. So we actually know how we deal with this kind of question. We've been told, first of all, that x is equal to tan y, and we want to find out what dy by dx is. Now, I just want you to ignore the fact it's going to be in terms of x. Let's first of all try and find dy by dx in terms of y. Well, if x is equal to tan y, I should just be able to differentiate with respect to y, which would give me sec squared y. And then I found out that dy by dx is going to be the reciprocal of that, which is just sec squared y. So I've actually now found out what dy by dx is, but it just isn't in terms of x. So I'm now going to erase this bit here, and I'm going to try and find out how I can make this be in terms of x. Well, we're going to try and use this identity that we have got here. We have got that 1 plus tan squared y equals sec squared y. And the reason I've changed it to y instead of x is because of the context of the question that I've got here. Now, my aim is to try and take this thing that I've got and to eliminate y. I want to get rid of y completely. Well, I already know by using this identity how I can turn it all into x because tan squared y is just x squared. So I get that sec squared y is just 1 plus x squared, which now means I can come back to the dy by dx that I have over here and I can just do 1 divided by sec squared y, which is just 1 plus x squared meaning that I've now achieved it, that I've now got this in terms of x. So there's always going to be this trick of starting off here with one of these identities and using the building blocks that you've got to try and find out what it is that you need. This next one that we're going to do is definitely a bit trickier though. So it says, given that x equals 2 sine y, express dy by dx in terms of x. Well, let's just forget about the in terms of x for a second. If we have that x equals 2 sine y, we know that we could find out dx dy, which is just going to be 2 cos y. And then I can take the reciprocal of that to find out that dy by dx is just going to be 1 over 2 cos y. Now, I need to find out what cos y is using this information that we've got here. So you'll see the thing that's going to connect together sine y and cos y is obviously going to be the fact that sine squared y plus cos squared y equals 1. Well, I might want to work on this a bit because I now know that x over 2 is sine y. That's going to help me with this substitution. So sine squared y is going to be x over 2 squared plus cos squared y equals 1. This makes me think I'm going to be able to find out what cos y is equal to. So cos squared y is going to be equal to 1 minus x over 2 squared. Just going to do some simplifying here. That's going to be 1 minus x squared over 4. And I'm actually going to even combine these together so 1 is going to become 4 over 4, so it's going to be 4 minus x squared over 4. Now, I don't want cos squared y, I want cos y. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and I'm going to have the square root of 4 minus x squared over the square root of 4, which is just 2. You can just take the square root of the numerator and the denominator there. So now that I know what cos y is over here, I can go back to this side, and I can substitute it in. So it's going to be 1 over 2 multiplied by the square root of 4 minus x squared divided by 2. And this 2 and this 2 will cancel, leaving you with 1 over 4 minus x squared all square rooted. And I'm happy to leave that as the answer that we've got. Now it's all in terms of x, and I feel like we're in a good position there. Now, there's only one um, question like this in the textbook. It's from exercise 9F, question 12. Um, but you could kind of make up some other ones that are like this too, just by starting off with x being equal to some kind of trig of y. Something I wanted to mention in both of these is that when I got to this stage here, which I'm going to just highlight in green, 
you'll notice I didn't actually try and simplify those trig bits. And the reason I didn't try and simplify those trig bits is that the building block of x equals tan y and the sec squared y could be linked like this. So there was no point in turning this thing that I had here into cos squared y because I already had them nicely linked through this identity. And it's the same thing that I have here. This building block of x over 2 being sine y and this over 2 cos y that I've got here, sine and cos are great to have together because they have that identity that connects them. And you'll find that's always a good connection to keep with these things. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. That's going to help you try exercise 9f, question 12.